Hello there, Roger Foster again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Drolet pellet stove. And this one here is uh, a Generation 2 ECO 45 that they had. Now, the problem I'm having with it is each year it's gotten a little bit worse, and the auger seems to be screeching periodically. It'll do it for about a minute or so. And then it'll stop for a while and then sometimes it does it as soon as it starts up other times it does it while it's using it so I've taken all the pellets out and I need to remove the auger assembly to get any of the fines that are up in the uh, shaft out of there also it's a good time to clean all this because it's all full of dust and everything in here it uh, last year I guess didn't get cleaned up too much I've noticed that there's rust on the shaft where the auger connects to the auger motor and there's a pile of rust down there so I'm assuming the screeching is from uh, the rust whatever the rust is coming from maybe the rust is coming from condensation you know but if I put cold pellets in but usually I don't I have the pellets in that container so I don't know where the moisture would be coming from to create the rust but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, clean that. I'm going to put another auger motor in. This one's still good, but I want to clean it up and re-lube it. Check it inside, make sure there's not excessive wear on the gears or bushings or anything. And then I can put this one back away for a spare. But uh, I can definitely see that there's rust on those screws or on the bolts and stuff that connect that and down in there there's a pile of rust and rust down in the bottom now there's a, a bolt that comes up under here I guess I gotta get a pair of vice grips to pull this out it looks like it's just slid in there and there's just like a, a little pressure tab on each side in the corner that holds that plate in and then I believe the only other thing you have to do is loosen off the two bolts that are on the auger shaft now if those bolts don't line up where you can get at them what you do is just plug the stove in and use the auger feeder advance for like if you were to uh, prime for the pellets the first time you put it in and just hold that button in or even pulse it periodically until the shaft turns to the point where you can access those bolts then once they're in a position where you can get at both of them unplug the stove again before you start to work on it now what this thing uses is a half inch to get that you could probably use a regular socket I got a half inch deep socket with an extension and basically that's uh, what'll just get me in there on top like that and and wiggle it and pull it down and there's your auger motor and there is all kinds of rust on that I wouldn't be surprised if that's rust and fines possibly I'm gonna take the rest of the thing out there's my replacement motor that's a brand new one that I had as a spare part this one here like I say is still good it's just I want to put a new one in to make sure I got no problems and then I can clean this one up and relube it and make sure everything's good with it and then put it away as a spare So basically here's the contraption and can't get a good shot at that. So what you have to do is take those four bolts out that hold that bracket and then that'll remove the shaft. You can drop the, then you can drop the shaft or you might even be able to take those 
bolts out of the uh, out of the actual shaft completely clean it up a bit and then drop the bracket off first and then try to slide out the uh, the auger because I'm not sure exactly what comes out in what order I've never taken this apart before there's four screws there they're probably the five sixteenths ones like that that hold it okay so I finally got it out it didn't come out easy because the bracket didn't want to let me get clearance you'll also probably need to order a new gasket you could probably put it back on depending on how clean it comes off this one still looks not too bad I mean I can always put high heat silicone on it and sandwich it in there when I put it back together and that'll suffice for sealing it but uh, I don't like to do that to bare metal because then it's a bastard to get it off if you ever have to get it off again you get that high heat silicone on there <laughs> So anyways, I couldn't get it out past the end. What you have to do is, I have the auger over here now. <laughs> so what you have to do is get that get that bearing down to that much. So you, you gotta create that much of a gap. So you'll be able to pull it down enough to get your hand in here and hold the shaft and then try to wiggle it. And what I did is I put a little bit of silicone lubricant around there. As soon as you get it down to where the holes are just inside the brass there, then you'll be able to make the clearance and slide the thing right out. And by the sounds of this squeaking, the problem I have is in this bushing, probably a rubber seal or something in there, and that's what's been causing my squeaking, is probably that damn bushing or whatever has been dry. And then combined with fines and rust or whatever that stuff is that was on there I don't know I'm gonna take it apart clean it up and see if it needs a new bushing or something then I guess I gotta order a bracket but I think I'll be okay I'll just lube it a little bit you don't want excessive amount of lube on there it'll gum right up and make it worse when you get uh, you know the fines and stuff getting in there but hopefully it'll get me through a couple years anyways without any more problems One of the things you want to do while you got it open is take your vacuum cleaner and take the end off of it a little shop vac or something I use this little dirt devil here hold on I can't do this with two hands that's not the proper attachment for this uh, there. yeah so I just take the bare end like that and just stick it up the thing and make sure that I suck anything out that's in there and that'll make sure that's clean enough Okay, so I got the auger completely out of the bushing. It was hard to do. I had to put some more silicone lubricant. You could probably use just some 3-in-1 oil or engine oil or anything that you got there just to, to free it up. And then uh, polish it a bit. There was all kinds of gunk in there, but there was nothing in there other than the brass bushing. So my guess is that either this bushing is slightly worn and it's allowing too many fines to go down in there and that's what was causing it to uh, to make that noise and to, to stiffen up and everything else but everything seems to be okay there's a bit of wear down on the bottom flight here where it's been rubbing on the plate but I don't think that's anything to really worry about because the sound wasn't coming from there it sounded more like a bushing sound a squeak or screech that it would do every once in a while so I think I'm okay I don't know if it still continues and I guess what I got to do is see if I can get a new bushing for this or maybe I have to buy the whole bracket to uh, stop that problem but there's nothing in there there's a little wee line in like about the halfway point but everything seems good just work it back and forth as much as you can and try to get as much of the build up out of there so it fits nice and snugly like I say I just used some uh, silicone lubricant for treadmill that I had kicking around but uh, you know anything there that you can just grease it with but you don't want to leave it on there where it's going to attract the uh, the sawdust particles to it 
and then it's uh, just a matter of reinstalling it. Yeah, see, there's no problem there now. She just slides right in with no problems at all. All right, so we got our bracket back in. Everything went in good. And this you can actually turn by hand now. So that's nice. So now I'll just thread the screws in, or the bolts in there a bit and line it up where I can get to it. And the thing is, when you line the shaft up, make sure you line the flat side up with one bolt and tighten that one first because the shaft will fit in anyway. So you want it locked in with the flat side first and then lock it in at the side as the secondary where that uh, bolt or the nut was on the right side of the bracket that's just a bumper so there actually is nothing that holds the motor to the bracket just the shaft the weight of the motor is held by the shaft what a stupid design <laughs> they could have at least bolted the damn thing to to it you know that just means you're gonna have excessive wear early putting all the weight on that bushing and that's probably why I started having problems. Now mind you, that's probably been 10 years that I've had this thing running every winter. So it's not bad, I guess. But like I say, this motor here is still good. I'm just gonna clean it all up and put it away. And I'll put this new one in now. That way I got one that's there that I know works. And uh, shouldn't have any problems with it all right so that's it they're all both tightened up good I had to uh, plug the stove in and just hook the motor up manually and advance the shaft to get it in the right position but other than that everything went in good there's a little bit of a gap there which I think is normal we're on the bumper down here this thing just sit like I say sits loose I guess because it only turns in one direction that it's considered okay if there's any more problems with it then I'm gonna have to get a new bushing or a new uh, bracket I think but right now everything seems to be okay it looks good the wires are back on I vacuumed everything out in there clean the fans next week I'll open the side panel and clean the uh, blower motor out when I get a chance because that's uh, you know another half an hour's work to 45 minutes to take that all apart and suck it out with the vacuum other than that I think that's it it's just a matter of throwing the back on it now and and that's it she be done okay so that's it she's all back together I do got to clean the outside of it like I say tomorrow or on the weekend I'll uh, open it up and clean the uh, the blower inside. Last weekend I did the chimney, so the chimney's all been cleaned. And I clean the outside chimney once a year that's up on the roof. And the portion that goes up to the ceiling, I clean that after every 50 bags of pellets. And that's good enough. I usually burn 150 to 200 bags over the winter. And she's all back together. The auger's primed and she's set for 70 degrees. Right now it's 71 so it hasn't kicked on. But uh, as soon as it kicks down to 70 degrees or 69 and a half it'll, uh, it'll kick on.